This is Colin Dixon with Endscreen Media and I'm at Google in Mountain View because I've come to speak with Shalini Goval Pai who is Senior Director and Head of Android TV. And uh, there's just been a new release of Android TV, which I'm really excited to talk to her about. Uh, but before, we wanted, to, we wanted to get started and talk about a sort of overview of where OTT and TV is headed. I've seen some amazing data just recently, Shalini. Things like um, Hub Research saying that millennials, 20, only 26% of them now, say that television is their default service. And... 43% are saying services like Netflix are their default. It seems like there's been just a massive shift, particularly younger folks, uh, recently to online viewing. Are you seeing similar similar things? Uh, definitely. Definitely we are seeing more and more OTT apps uh, from our content media providers coming online. We're also seeing that TVs and set-top boxes are coming on becoming what we call smart the reason being that they're seeing it too, and they want their customers to be able to experience both broadcast TV as well as over the top at the same time. So yes, that's, that is where the world is headed, and we're all tiptoeing into that world, slowly but surely. Indeed. And so is that, is that some of the motivation behind the, the changes that you've made in the new version of Android TV? And just, just walk us through what you were trying to achieve there. Yeah. So. Um, uh, late last year, we did a huge consumer research with over 1,000 users, over 5,000 users in three countries. And the consistent feedback we heard from users was that what they really loved about cable was that it really provided them one place to see all of their content. And, you know, with the proliferation of apps, the difficulty becomes when I come home, which app do I really open? Where do I go to find the content that I want to see? And that was really our insight behind what made us move to a channels model, which is, can we provide one screen where users can really quickly find all the different content that's on now, whether it's coming through live TV, that part we're still integrating, but whether it's coming from different OTT apps, can there be a consolidated place to see all of this content that I subscribe to, and then quickly go to the one that I really want to see at that given time. That's a, you're so right, I'm seeing a lot of that in the data now about the complexity issues that people actually are finding it quite hard to figure out which app to go to. So this idea of channels really, that really seems to attack directly at that because when I set, when I set up the new version, um, you know, I had my Netflix channel and I had a Sling TV ch channel. And in each of those were the things I just watched. And, and mm -hmm. so it was very, very easy for mm -hmm. me to find mm -hmm. to find what I was looking for. There was another one. Uh, there was another channel as well, which I was very interested in. It was um, it was what I just watched mm -hmm. or was in the process of watching. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that sort of across across all of the services. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so the the first channel is typically what we call the watch next channel. And the insight behind that is most typical users now, especially of OTT, engage in what we call binge watching, which is you start a show and you maybe you continue watching it for 24 hours, or like you wanna see it within a week and you just wanna constantly be engaged with that content. And so the watch next row is really our attempt to say, hey, we know you were watching this show, and by the way, the next episode is on, so here, watch this next or we know you left the show incomplete, clearly you want to complete it. And so the watch next is, is really our effort to enable users to quickly get to something that they're already in the process of watching with the understanding that that's probably what they want to be continuing to watch. Now, in order to do that, to make those, those the channels work and the watch next work, you have to get their compliance, mm -hmm. get the mm -hmm. uh, service providers to actually mm -hmm. work with you. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to do that? Because they have to sort of open up a little bit. They don't like doing that, do they? Um, so in any partnership, this is like my strong belief, any partnership and Google's strong belief, that any partnership is a two-way street, which is there has to be value for both sides. And mm -hmm. our content partners, the value that they see is always, you know, how do we get engagement and how do we get subscribers understanding what we're providing and wanting to engage with us. And we really believe that Channels and Watch Next is a brilliant way for them on TV to be able to engage their users. Clearly most of them saw that too, which is why they've worked with us in enabling this channel format 
on Android TV. Now, is it hard for them to integrate integrate with this new functionality? So what's going on under the covers to support all yeah. of this? Um, so we, we made some platform layer changes and we have an SDK for our developers that enables them to very quickly create channels, push out recommendations on those channels, as well as be able to take certain content and put it in the watch next row. Right, so it's so it's very so it's pretty easy for them to actually integrate this. Um, so one of the things I love about Android TV is it doesn't just sit on consumer electronic devices. You're also working with operators now. Um, does does this version trickle through to them? How, mm -hmm. What are you doing with with mm -hmm. operators mm -hmm. and, and Android mm -hmm. TV? Right, so you know, just going back to my comment, like a partnership is always a two way street. And we're always looking for how do we add the most value to our partnership. What we hear a lot from our OEM and our operator partners is that they really want, they're much more focused on how does Android TV provide them the best platform to bring their users the best of cable TV or broadcast TV as well as over the top apps. And that's what we work with them on. And in fact, with our new release, what we have really pushed is making sure that our platform is, is performant on lower hardware, lower cost hardware, We've also worked really hard on making sure that the quality of the platform mm -hmm. is top notch. And that's really what we've been providing for our operator and OEM partners. Right, that, that's so important because many of them already have set top boxes that are IP enabled in the mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. but they don't perform so mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So squeezing it down so that it actually fits in those boxes yep. is, mm -hmm. is pretty cool. So um, what other enhancements, are there, what else are you trying to achieve as you, as you go forward and, and enhance uh, Android TV? I think our focus remains on some of these key things that I just pointed out. One is without performance, without quality, we have nothing. And so we have an entire team actually based up in Zurich that is completely focused on the performance and the quality of our product and our platform. Number two, without our content partners, again, we have nothing. And so we're, we're very engaged in figuring out how do we get engagement and subscriptions for our content partners? And number three, again, without users, no one has anything at all. And so always, always focusing on what are the user needs? What is, if, a, if there's a parent in the household, what are their needs with our product? If there are children in the household, what are their needs with our product? So we're completely zoned in on the user needs and making sure that the experiences that we provide out of the box actually match the expectations that our end users have. And talking about out of the box experiences, mm -hmm. I know one of the areas that you've been very focused on is setup, which I gotta tell you was, I, I have an Android phone, it couldn't have been easier. Yeah, um, so when, glad to hear that. <laughs> when, when, it, when the system came up, it asked me if I had a phone. I said yes, it connected. And just everything got set up automatically. You mm -hmm. even picked up the passwords mm -hmm. to some of my key accounts like mm -hmm. Netflix. So I mm -hmm. didn't even have to enter mm -hmm. them. Um, do you, are you also thinking about folks that don't have Android phones? And how about keeping, keeping it easy for those folks as well? Um, we, we're, our aim is always to enable all our users, regardless of models and phone types, or they should have the best experiences, and we want to remove all friction points. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, there are technical limitations that we can do on our own platforms versus others, and so those are always the boundaries that we work through. Very good. Yeah. So this is very exciting. I'm, I hope I strongly recommend all, everybody who listens to this to go out and get the new version. It's great. Thank you. Uh, really enjoyed using it. Um, Shalini, thanks. I hope you'll come back and tell us more when you, uh, when you give us new releases. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. Thank you. This has been Colin Dixon with Endscreen Media.